So if you're like I was about a year ago, when you think of soldering, these might be the type of images that come to mind. Thankfully, I gave it a shot and quickly learned that there is no reason to be intimidated. In this video, I'll show you the basics of getting started and hopefully by the end, you'll have the confidence to try doing it yourself. First, let's go over the equipment. I recommend getting a little fan like this to help suck up the fumes. Next, getting something to help hold things so your hands can be free will almost be necessary. Now there's a lot of different options when it comes to the actual solder, but this particular brand and product came highly recommended to me, and so far it's worked out great. There's also many types of soldering irons you can get. I got this one since it had great reviews on Amazon, and it's digital, so you can easily adjust the temperature depending on your need. Now the thing I probably end up doing the most is just soldering basic wires onto the pads of an LED strip, so let's go over how to do that first. So my go-to wires are these 18 gauge soft silicone cables. They're extremely flexible and easy to work with and pretty much all I use these days. Now the color of the wires don't actually matter, but for this tutorial I'll be using red, black, and green. Next you want to twist the ends of the exposed wires tightly so that no strands are loose. This next process is called tinning. With my iron set to about 550 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll apply a little solder to the tip and then use that to heat the wires from underneath. Once things get hot enough, I should be able to melt some solder into the wires from above. I really wanted to make this video because it's one thing for someone to tell you how to do something, but at least for me, it's much easier to understand and be able to replicate when I'm able to see very close up what's going on. So if you're like me, hopefully this will be helpful. For the wires we just tinned, we can now trim them so that they're about the same length as the pads on the LED strip. Next we can begin prepping the LED strip. I'm again going to put a little solder on the tip of the iron to help with heat transfer and place that on the copper pad. I'm then going to quickly feed some solder at the edge of the pad and when you remove the heat you should have a nice little blob that remains. So you can now place the tin wire on top of the blob of solder and press down with your hot iron. Everything should melt together. Remove the heat and hold in place for about one second and everything should then be hard. Now there's probably an unlimited number of reasons why you might want to do this, but here's an example from my LED accent wall project I just finished up. I used the same technique to connect the end of this LED strip to the beginning of this one over here. I then hid the wires around the window frame. I also connected wires the same way right here and ran them down to the controller and power unit. So I hope that was easy to follow and let me know if you have any questions, but for now let's move on to the next walkthrough. For this next example, let's say you wanted to connect two pieces of LED strips together but you didn't want to use wires to do it. The first thing you're going to want to do is line up the pads as best you can and make sure the arrows on both LED strips are going the same way. And from here it's pretty similar to what we just did as you're just applying solder to both sides of the pads. Now let's say you wanted to solder this type of connector to your LED strip. It's very similar to the first example I showed you, but I'll walk you through the steps again as these wires are much smaller than the 18 gauge ones I generally use. And as I look closer at these wires, they actually may have already been tinned, but I'll do it again just in case. Next we can again put some solder on the copper pads of the LED strip that we'll be attaching the connector to. And finally, you can connect them together. So one of my favorite ways of controlling LEDs is installing WLED on an ESP module. This requires me to connect wires to the ESP board. I used to use breadboard jumper cables, but have now switched to using the thicker 18 gauge silicone wires. Next, you can twist and tin them just like we did in the first example. So 
So here you have the two most common ESP boards. The left is the 8266 and the right is the 32. The 32 is an upgraded version of the 8266, but in my experience they both work really well. If you end up using the 8266 on the left, you would attach the wires to the VIN, GND, and D4 pins. If you use the 32 on the right, you would be using the VIN, GND, and D2 pins. And for this example, I'll be using the 32 board. What we want to do is connect the wires we just tinned to the pins on the bottom of the module. First I'm going to put a little bit of solder on the post, but this isn't like the twisted wires where it's going to soak in, so the goal is to just get it slightly coated. Next you can take the tinned wires and put it up against the post. Then use your hot iron and place it on the wire and the post and things should melt together and harden once the heat's removed. Now you can do the same thing for the GND and the D2 pins. Now on these posts, since they're so close together, I generally like to use some heat shrink tubing to give it some extra protection. Cut off what you need and then use a heat gun to set. And the last thing I'll quickly mention is if you're working with an LED strip that has that protective coating over the LEDs, you could just use your finger to peel it back and then you can either use the scissors or just pull it and it will tear off so you can get to the copper pads underneath. Now if you're new to my channel, I like to do fun little DIY LED projects like you're seeing now. And I want to point out that for everything that I've made, I don't think I've had to do any other type of soldering from what I went over in this video. So hopefully that lets you know just how much you can do with learning these few basic techniques. So as always, thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions at all.